Hello, and I'm Erin Matson. I am both the Action Vice President of the National Organization for Women, as well as the Education Vice President of the National Organization for Women Foundation. And on behalf of NOW Foundation, now in its 14th year running of our groundbreaking Love Your Body campaign, I welcome you today. Now, I may not have the Twitter following of our first panelist, Gabby, <laughs> who is at MTV TJ, by the way. But quite a few of you do follow me. I know you do in this room. And those of you who do know that I've got a weekly beef with Meet the Press. <laughs> it's a great show, but seriously, where are the women? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So last Sunday morning, like every Sunday morning, I dutifully tweeted out the ratio of men and women on the show. This is arguably the most important talk show in politics. There were six men, seven if you count the host, and one woman. This ties back, I promise. In between the show segments, they were running an ad for the Miss USA pageant taking place. <laughs> the voiceover said this. Where will she come from? <laughs> what will she look like? <laughs> when will she eat? <laughs> and they cut to the winner. These two facts, on one hand, the absolutely pathetic representation of women in public leadership. And I say that not to minimize wonderful people like our police chief right there, but it's pathetic. And I, I need to add that this is happening at the same time that our nation is waging war on Afghanistan, Iraq, and even the women of this country. Yes. So we've got the pathetic representation of women in public leadership. And then on the other hand, we have this encouragement. The only representation of women that we often see is this encouragement to be pretty at all costs. The idea that women are most valued or how we look, rather than what we do, or who we are. These two facts do not exist side by side. They aren't a coincidence, they depend on one another. Without each other, well, they can't work together so well. So right now, we're here to tackle the love your body side of that equation. We're here to say no more. And I want to tell you, a lot of you know my story, I'm not shy about it. Um, I'm an anorexia survivor myself. I was told I wasn't going to make it to my high school graduation. I went on. I, I did. I recovered. I went on to become a volunteer feminist activist. And I went on to come to this position at NOW. And I want to say... personal, but it's also deeply emotional for me when I say that I mean it from the bottom of my heart when I say that loving our bodies is a radical political act with profound implications for politics in this country and the entire world. This idea that muffin tops are part of women rather than really weirdly cut pants that's part of the cage. This idea that 15% of the world's population, more often women, has a disability, rather than 85% of people having bodies that are arbitrarily tagged as having ability, is part of the cage. And this idea that women don't know how to negotiate a raise, rather than deserve to have their class action status recognized by the Supreme Court, for systematic
systematic sex discrimination, that's part of the cage. And it all starts within. And that is why the Love Your Body campaign is not fluff. This is very political, what we're talking about, although it does have the power to transform our own lives. In sum, it's time to stop blaming women for the institution of sexism. Yeah. 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 It's not our hair, it's not our clothes, it's not our shape, it's not our color, and it's not our tint within our color, and it's not our fault. We're not going to internalize this junk anymore, and it starts within. And it's pretty difficult when we're bombarded with all of these images and messages all the live long day that show us an impossible ideal and six men and tell us we are less. But I think our speakers have some good ideas, so let's start there. 